We're almost ready for the next speaker, Simona Ferrari. And uh, she is the community manager Whoa. for uh, three 3D Hub printers. Mm -hmm. And this is a community network of 30,000 3D printers worldwide. And this is going to mean that there's going to be a huge paradigm shift in how we produce pro uh, products, uh, Maybe stores will have to close down. This will probably have a huge impact on how we uh, how we deal with Thank stuff, so buying much. stuff, yeah, yeah, selling good. stuff, making stuff, designing stuff. Please give a very warm welcome and applause for Simona Ferrari. Hello, hello everyone. So, well, my name is Simona, and I work for 3D Hubs, that is the largest platform in the world for 3D printing. And today I really would like to tell you a little bit more about 3D printing, how we image in the future. So 3D Apps is um, a Dutch platform, was born in 2013, and um, well, it's now one of the most important startup all over the world. So I really would like to tell you how also we managed to grow all our community and uh, what we expect in the future. So the presentation will be mostly on three sections. The first one is the future of manufacturing. The second one is the technologies available right now. And the third one is on who is now 3D printing. So I really would like to start with a quick survey right now. How many of you have heard about 3D printing in their life? Just raise your hand. And uh, how many of you have used 3D printing? Oh, that's a pretty cool number. Well done, guys. So basically, all starts uh, looking at the past. So this is uh, around uh, 1800. You have craftsmen uh, creating uh, on-demand products, crafting wood, and uh, giving uh, on-demand products for their customers. Then we have in the 1900, Ford and Kinis that come up with the amazing solution of uh, mass manufacturing and uh, the supply chain. So then these cars were all produced automatically with uh, a huge supply chain uh, with, uh, within the factory. And um, well, personalization basically didn't exist at all. Like Ford used to say, the customer has the freedom to, to choose uh, whichever color he wants, but it has to be black. So like, there's no personalization at all. Like the customer can touch the, the design or like personalize how he wants it or so. And then uh, this is the situation right now. Like we have really to be aware of what's up so the production is mostly in uh, Asia, mostly in China, and uh, this is the situation of the factory. And uh, we come from a, a, a completely human uh, approach to the industry that was in 1800 to what is it now that you have uh, humans um, low paid that uh, do the same job every day, and then uh, these goods are uh, shipped back to Europe or to the US. And, uh, this doesn't bring, first of all, joy for uh, working, and set second of all, is a, a completely wrong system to, to produce things. Why? First of all, because of pollution. You have to know that container ships are uh, polluting the world much more than uh, all cars all together. And what's even worse is that uh, three container ships out of 10 its goods will be thrown away as soon as they arrive in Europe. So basically, we low pay um, producer in China or Asia for them producing things that then we will throw away as soon as they arrive. And uh, this is what is bringing most of the pollution right now. Uh, I forgot. If you have uh, any question, any time, just raise your hand and ask. Okay. Then, second of all, um, well, I studied a bit of economics when uh, when I was studying. And uh, basically all crises, economical crises, uh, have a, a common thing, uh, that is overproduction. So we overproduce most of the goods, and then uh, they become unsold. So you have to rent warehouses where to store these goods, and uh, you keep on uh, renting and renting and renting, and then these goods become unsold. So nobody will ever buy it. But you keep on storing them, and uh, they become without any kind of use. So this is what uh, 3D printing has uh, its main aim, because uh, it's a completely different kind of production. This is, for example, a professional 3D printer. I know that uh, the guy seems a bit of serial killer, but uh, not uh, most of the time are like this. 
And uh, it can go layer by layer. This is, for example, an industrial 3D printer that is used mostly from big brands, big companies before mass production. So they have the real prototype before the mass production. So let's look into the main benefits of 3D printing. So we have a production that is local, on demand, and personalized. So I just produce whatever I will consume. I just produce something that I can personalize. Basically, production can have a personalization without any further cost. While with the mass production, you have to basically produce 10,000 pieces personalized that then uh, they will become unused. They will become unsold. And then finally, 3D printers are evolving everywhere. There are uh, around 200,000 3D printers all over the world right now. So you can really make the production local. And uh, well, so you basically start with 3D printing with a digital file. Um, there are, um, well, when I was born, it was 1992, and uh, I used to, to use paint uh, every day, like uh, draw up with uh, co lines, colors, and so on, and then uh, print it out. What's up now is that you have 3D modeling softwares that allows you to have a 3D model, and then you can just 3D print it directly. You have to know that all, all different products right now have a CAD, CAD file that is for 3D modeling. A 3D modeling software delivers a CAD file that then now you can 3D print. You can uh, digital manufacture. So these two guys, this, yeah, these two young people um, are Bram de Zwart and Brian Garrett. And uh, th they guys are Dutch and they started 3D apps uh, in 2013. That now is three years ago. And uh, their main aim was to connect all the 3D printers worldwide to deliver uh, local production to everyone. So what 3D Apps does is connecting you to the closest 3D printer to you. So you can get to know that uh, in Utrecht uh, there are 100 3D printers. So you can just have a production that is on demand and you don't have to own a 3D printer to print out. And at the same time, if you have a 3D printer, you can earn uh, some money and uh, print for others. So yeah, if, if you're familiar with Airbnb, it, it works exactly this. Yeah. So no, the software is uh, depends. The software for 3D modeling, um, the software for 3D modeling, we don't deliver it, but there are a lot of uh, 3D modeling softwares online that you can use for free. One is Fusion 360 is extremely easy. Otherwise, uh, well, Tinkercad is the easiest one, like you basically assemble blocks together, but can be extremely complex at the same time. So you can just 3D print this stuff away. So how, how it works, you can just upload your design, then choose a 3D printing location next to you, and then pick up your product in one or two days. That could seem a lot, but right now, for the product that uh, you're wearing, uh, very probably it took uh, months and months and months of production from China to, to here, and then you go to the store. And uh, here you, you come back to be owner of the product that you have. And you can uh, absolutely personalize it as more as possible. So this is the map of 3D printers we have right now. So these are 30,000 3D printers. And I can give you some uh, fun facts uh, right now. So for example, you see the 3D printer in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean is uh, in an island. So imagine now you're a designer, you can have uh, 3D printed in that island in just one day. You basically print it out uh, mm, even before then you come there and arrive there. Like it's a, it's a completely easy and smooth uh, production. And at the same time, we are in 160 countries. That is uh, even more than 50 countries more than McDonald's. So, well, we are a bit international in this sense. And, but uh, everything started uh, with these two guys. So. He is uh, Daniel, and uh, is the customer. And Mark is the 3D printer owner, a 13-year-old guy who is living in Amsterdam and has uh, a 3D print, a 3D printer is his own life. Like uh, he has been printing around for uh, for several years, and he just produces things every time. And then we have Daniel, who is um, um, very passionate about uh, uh, mountains, uh, skiing, uh, and GoPro. So he has a GoPro, and he needed uh, a case before uh, going on vacation. 
we really needed it because, uh, well, it's extreme sport, so he needed a cover for his GoPro. And uh, he looked on Amazon, and the price was uh, like 30 euro for having it shipped from uh, the US, actually, and then uh, uh, delivery time of uh, one week. And then he went on Thingiverse, that is the biggest collection of models online, and discovered that he could download the model, have it printed out uh, 800 meters from his home the same day. So he just went to Mark and said, OK, I really would like this, and have it printed out. So it's a completely change uh, of way. So here is uh, how you can 3D print. I don't know whether you can see it. Uh, I think it's pretty difficult. But if you type uh, what is 3D printing on Google and then next 3D hubs, there's uh, all these resources that you can use. So you can uh, design a file with uh, 3D modeling softwares. Some of them free are uh, Fusion 360, Tinkercad, or uh, some more uh, expert ones can be rhinoceros uh, and so on. Or you can search for a model. As I said before, there's Thingiverse that has like 700,000 models online for free. Or like you can scan an object. So maybe you have heard about 3D selfie or so on, but you can scan whatever object and have your 3D model immediately. And then you can 3D print it out. You can also tweak it in a way that you recover a file and you, you make it better. Oh. So this is a 3D printer. Unfortunately, I don't have it with me, but uh, I know there are some in that corner. You can check it out. And this is a, a, an FDM 3D printer. What does it mean? Fuse the position in modeling. Sorry, I'm Italian and like my English sometimes is horrible. But uh, here we are building up a drone. And most of the time, uh, this 3D printer produce prototypes before mass production. So I, I can uh, personalize my model and then uh, have it printed out, have it produced for thousands of pieces. And um, well, how it works, there is a filament behind, a filament of plastic, and then it goes through a nozzle of a very high temperature. It's like 200 degrees, 230, that follows uh, the path of the, um, of the 3D design. And then you go layer by layer, and the, the model is produced. Another technology available is uh, SLA, that is uh, res in resin, and uh, is a bit different because uh, it is uh, very detailed, is uh, mostly used for jewelry. Jewelry is uh, an industry that is completely being disrupted by 3D printing. Like, now you can make rings that are personalized and then cast it in gold, or silver, or whatever, and uh, have it immediately, while before uh, you needed to produce it in another way. And this, for example, is an engine of the motor. And uh, finally, one of my favorite technology is uh, SLS. That is, uh, are these 3D printers that are very expensive, but uh, give uh, an amazing quality. So, uh, for example, here is the strand best. I think uh, some Dutch uh, would uh, know about it. And uh, it's printed out just in one piece. So you take it out from the 3D printer. You don't have to do anything except cleaning it up from the powder and it moves. Something like this with mass production would be unthinkable. So what's up next? Because we hear about 3D printing a lot. There are people speaking about 3D printing guns that, well, I don't know exactly why they talk about this because uh, mostly are US based and they can buy it uh, at every store almost. And then, uh, well, there are a lot of developments on in this industry. And uh, one of these is to have uh, 3D printers which are getting extremely faster. So this is a, a, a seven per speed, but can have the model printed out in uh, just one hour. This would take even less than one hour. While well, usually in a 3D printer it would uh, take around five hours to print it out. So you have the model coming out from the resin tank, very detailed. And uh, basically, they showed this at the TED talk of last year. And this year, the, the product will come to the market. So it's really a, an incredible technology right now. Oh. Other thing that is happening is um, our parts produced in two different materials. For example, this is a nylon together with carbon fiber. And is used mostly by engineers. And they do that because uh, a part in aluminum would cost them a lot. And now they would have the same part 
with the same resistance, with the same personalization, with 3D printing for the price of plastic. So it's a really huge change on this side. And then uh, this is, sorry. So for example, this, this is as strong as aluminum. So they did parts for cars with this, but it's, uh, first of all, it's very light. So imagine for cars is extremely important. Like they can, uh, they can save so much money on gasoline and especially for uh, Formula One uh, or so on, they can uh, make very intricate models that uh, are extremely lightweight. Well, it's not with the same, uh, but, uh, but it has been used a lot in the industry. And there is a completely new material, so there are developments on this side. And um, again, for the desktop 3D printers, so the, the one uh, ranging around 1,000, but even less, like you can build one by your own for um, less than 300 euro. You can now also print in wood fiber. So you have a product coming from a filament spool in wood, and plastic, and then at the end you have a product uh, that is wood and plastic. So you can create some fancy stuff uh, in wood. But uh, let's look now where like is used most, mostly. So Airbus is uh, the huge uh, producer of airplanes uh, worldwide. I've been using, this is 3D printing in titanium. It's made by very professional 3D printers that cost more than 600,000 Euro, and what they do is they make products that are extremely complex in shape and extremely lightweight. So again, they would save so much money on the long run. They would spend more in the production, but then saving money for gasoline, saving money in uh, all the the weight of the of the process, then uh, this would uh, cost them uh, much less. Then. Uh, they can produce uh, now uh, tables that are mass produced, and this uh, I think is the smartest way of using 3D printing. Basically, you can get wood, um, wood parts for a table, mass produced, and you do the standard one. And then uh, you can combine them together with 3D printing, creating something completely personalized. And uh, this is a um, uh, Minale Mie Maeda is a duo in uh, Endoven, and they won uh, recently a design award for this table. Well, this uh, has been created by the co-founder of 3D Apps, Brian Garrett, and uh, what stuff here uh, was uh, his project for Thesis, and uh, he did uh, all the um, song, the favorite song of the customer in the headphone. So then you have the wording uh, going on there, and uh, all the headphones are 3D printed. And then, of course, product designers are our main customers. Like, they use 3D printing a lot. And uh, we have seen uh, using 3D apps recently for uh, a Kickstarter campaign. So they have done uh, several prototypes, iteration, for then arriving at the final product they want. So this was an uh, Occam razor, and now would cost around 70 euro uh, mass produced. But was all before was done by 3D printing. Then uh, some scale model in architecture. Imagine you speaking with the customer, and then uh, you can show directly how the model will look like, how, how it would feel. And uh, definitely, this is a completely different experience also for the customer. Like, you don't have to think, uh, like I have some archi architect friends, and like they, they were building up uh, the scale model in paper. This is now something uh, completely outdated. You can just 3D print your model. And uh, well, definitely retail is uh, a very good uh, aspect to see 3D printing. So every one of us has a uh, different year, of course. And uh, what they are doing now in New York is uh, scan the inner part of your ear in order to create an earplug that uh, is uh, completely custom made on your ear. And they have done uh, a store like this, it's called Normal. And uh, imagine, like, I think every one of us has had, like, the sensation of having uh, very uncomfortable earphones. And uh, at this moment, you can create a completely personalized, on-demand product around it. But the most exciting things are brands, because uh, every industry would uh, explode as soon as you get uh, brands on board. And uh, we are seeing uh, a, a 
pretty big challenge for the first 3D printed shoes. So this is Under Armour. They are they are um, 3D printing the store, and uh, they have been uh, releasing it uh, this April. Then at the same time, Nike uh, has been 3D printing just for uh, very top uh, football players. This part of the shoe that uh, actually I don't know the name, but uh, the so those are interchangeable, and uh, you can uh, always 3D print them on demand. And then um, we have New Balance, but moreover we have Adidas. That this is uh, extremely cool. Maybe you have seen this spot, and this is 3D printed. Then it can the person can run, and the price for this shoe would be around 220 euro. Of course, the prices for this kind of uh, um, 3D printing related stuff at this moment are really high, but we imagine in the future that everyone would have access to it. And imagine uh, combined with 3D apps, you would be able to have the shoe that is manu mass manufactured and then custom made for your foot locally. So you have just to go one kilometer away. But uh, what's interesting is that uh, we're seeing students, and uh, this survey showed it uh, pretty much, that. Uh, are using 3D printing much more than educators. So educators really don't want to even hear about what 3D printing is. It's too scary to uh, approach a completely new technology. While students are seeing that 3D printing can be cheap, they can uh, save a lot of uh, time modeling uh, or like uh, seeing the result of, your pr of their projects. And um, well, on 3D apps, we are seeing that a uh, lot of students are using uh, 3D printers. And since they are still kind of expensive, uh, they don't want to buy one. So um, we're giving away 25% discount at this moment. These are some projects we have seen from students. This is a student from Endoven, who has been doing a, a scare model of a bicycle with, uh, this is wood fiber, and this is plastic. And also, of course, GoPro. GoPro are extremely popular in 3D hubs. And uh, you can get it three times faster and five times cheaper. Well, this, uh, I, I, most of the time I look after uh, student uh, orders and student management. So this uh, was pretty funny because uh, I was speaking with the student. And he, he's a student from the University of Arts in London. And he was having a project in the morning and the deadline the same day for delivering a project. and. Uh, well, you can see that uh, the hub is just seven minutes away. He heard about the urge of printing out the products, and then the same day was done, and the student could just deliver the project done to the professor. And we really believe this could be the next industrial revolution that will happen very soon, and so it's better get prepared and like start thinking uh, about 3D printing, how can uh, revolutionize our life and uh, some products that can made for it. And that's about it. So if you want more information about 3D printing, I would definitely suggest you to go to this link because uh, you can really start exploring on this. Thank you. Do you have a question? Any yeah. question? But uh, <laughs> that's all up to you. Simona uh, Ferrari, you. thank Thanks. you. Yeah, okay. uh, are there any audience questions about 3D printing? Yeah, I know you all want to go home and 3D print. And now they're getting job offers. So what do you think is the biggest barrier for people to start 3D printing at home? Well, still, um, I would say um, most of the people don't know about softwares for 3D modeling, and um, there's still very few brands that uh, embrace the 3D printing revolution. I can give you an example. Like if uh, Philips, the hardware company, would uh, publish uh, its CAD model, its CAD model, and uh, make it um, available for everyone to download and to 3D print, then uh, everyone would start 3D printing something. And why Philips would do that? Uh, it's just because, imagine if I break my blender, uh, if I break like the part for uh, changing the speed, uh, then I don't want to buy a new blender. I just want to repair it. Uh, and at this moment, it's taking ages. So I would buy a new one uh, and the one uh, of uh, another brand, not of Philips. So that's the reason why I think brands should really open source all the design in order to have a really great engagement with the brand itself. I don't know whether, but I think brands should really get into this industry in order to let everyone start 3D printing. I think that's a great idea. I would love 
3D print a printer because you know how printer always breaks they, they always break down. Yeah. It would be great if I could just push a button and it would just a new one would just roll out. That'd be well, great. <laughs> they they have basically um, 3D printers have been around for 30 years, but what's interesting is that in 2006. They, most of the patents and um, yeah, you know, like they, they deliver, like they expire. So then the University of Bath came up with the idea of creating a, a replicating 3D printer. So you, have a, you build up your 3D printer and then you build up uh, and print the parts for the 3D printer and then you create another one and so and so and so. So it's kind of like little rabbits who just reproduce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like <but that>. uh, <laughs> it's kind of uh, the same. <laughs> Any other questions? 3D printers? No? All right. Thank you so Thanks. much, Simona. Thanks.